Before the video starts, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, NBA Ball Stars. NBA Ball Stars is a hybrid basketball game unlike any game you have ever seen. This game combines the best superstars the NBA has to offer with fast-paced gameplay, unique action shots, and a gem-bursting puzzle game. Now they even allow you to take charge of your own NBA team and build a roster of any superstar players you want. Also take on the challenge of the road to the playoffs where you'll be able to compete for a championship. With a huge roster of NBA superstars to collect and the ability to level up your players not only offensively but defensively to make them even better, the possibilities on this game are limitless. So if you're looking for a new, great NBA related game, make sure you click the link in the description to pre-register now. Once again, thanks to NBA Ball Stars for sponsoring this video. Welcome back. Today is gonna to be a little bit of a different type of video. I think I'd be doing a disservice to you guys and to all of the 2K community if I didn't point out some of the problems, more importantly, provide some solutions going into NBA 2K22. Majority of the time in the 2K community, people are quick to point out problems. This sucks, that sucks, this doesn't work, that doesn't work, but they don't provide any solutions to those problems. Well, today I think I have a few ideas that could help steer us back in the right direction to making 2K22 one of the best 2Ks we've ever seen. Now it's no secret, NBA 2K21 Next Gen did not go according to plan. The amount of problems with the game in terms of quality of life, like error codes and lag outs and players getting deleted and just overall issues with the city were apparent and they were detrimental to the game. It also showed in big creators leaving. Guys like Ticino and G-Man, pillars of the 2K community, pulling millions of views per month just completely stop playing the game, completely stop posting content about the game. That says a lot about the overall disappointment for what was anticipated with the game and then the product that we ended up actually receiving. So there's probably hundreds or thousands of issues we could come up with in terms of what would make the game better, but I wanted to narrow it down to the four big blocks, the four big pillars, in my opinion, that will completely shift the dynamic around the game and steer it back into a direction where you'll see these big creators start to come back. You'll see the community as a whole come together again and make it much more exciting and enjoyable for all parties involved. Whether you're a casual player, a hardcore player, a top rep grinder, whatever you consider yourself, I think these four pillars will hit on all levels for all consumers on the game. Now listen, a lot of work goes into these videos. I appreciate everyone that could just drop me a like. That takes one second. Also, we're still on that big grind to a million subscribers. And if you've been watching my videos for 10, 20, 30 videos and you haven't subscribed yet, just click the button. If this is your first video, then listen, I completely understand. Give me a chance and maybe at the end of the video, you'll think about it. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the absolute number one most important thing going into NBA 2K22 is gameplay. Good gameplay can cover all sorts of problems. Good gameplay is the absolute heart and soul of a video game. An example, NBA 2K17 had tons and tons of problems. You would get stuck on that Paul George loading screen for 20 minutes sometimes, but people were willing to wait that 20 minutes because they enjoyed the gameplay that much. They knew as soon as they finally got into that park, they would get games right away and the gameplay was fun and exciting and enjoyable for them. Now, obviously the game would be better with those little fixes and not having to wait on the Paul George loading screen, which we'll get into later. But right now we're talking about gameplay and the best way to explain good gameplay, I think is with a flowchart. I don't know if you guys have ever seen one. Essentially a flowchart looks something like this, where you have user capability and task difficulty on each side. If the game is too easy, people are gonna reach a state of boredom and not wanna play. If the game is too difficult, they're gonna reach a level of anxiety that's takes, that takes away from the enjoyment and they're not gonna to wanna to play anymore. A balance of both puts you in a flow zone. Those are the games that you play where it's been six hours and it went by in a blink of an eye. You didn't even realize you've been playing for six hours. You've just been enjoying it that much. But you also have the flip side of it where you play a game for 20 minutes and before you know it, you're like, this is not enjoyable and you get off of it. Now the problem with 2K is you have two different sets of players. You have the casual player and the hardcore player the sweats, the tryhards, the people that take it very serious. So reaching that flow zone for a casual player is a lot different than reaching that flow zone for a competitive player. So something that many, many people have suggested before is having two separate game modes, an unranked game mode and a ranked game mode. The unranked game mode, you can have it be more random, more sporadic, more anything can happen. 
Maybe the difficulty is a little easier, but then the competitive mode is much more skill based. That's gonna allow both different types of players to reach that flow zone. If you go into the competitive scene, and it's too difficult, you're not gonna to wanna to play the game anymore, but that's okay. You have the option to go to the unranked mode. That's easier, allow you to practice more, allow you to just enjoy getting on the game after a long day and enjoy yourself. But then you have the other mode for the 2K League players, the comp pro-am players, the stage tryhards, those types of guys. Reaching that flow zone is what allows people to truly enjoy something, whether it's a game or an activity in life, or well, whatever it may be, reaching that flow zone is very important. And I think having two separate game modes, unranked and ranked with different sliders would solve that problem. The last thing I'll say about gameplay is the game testers that 2K decides to bring in cannot just be the typical video game testers. They have to be 2K players. 2K players have to go in and try the game out themselves. Whether they're going to send you a digital copy or fly people out, Whatever the case may be, bring in actual 2K players, guys that play the game daily. Different skill levels is fine, the casual player, the more competitive player, the professional player. Bring in all different types of people to test the game out. You will find so many bugs, so many errors, so many broken game mechanics before the game even comes out so that we get a more polished final product the day we purchase the game. The second pillar I have is what I would call quality of life. A smooth, error-free game. Not getting dashboarded, not getting error-coded every five minutes. Nothing is more frustrating than getting on a game where if you're on the game for an hour, you only get to play for 20 minutes. Gameplay still is, of course, the top priority, but the quality of life thing is very important as well. A lot of the complaints we get about next gen is the fact that even when you get on the game, after you get through the save file corrupt and the error codes and you finally skateboard halfway across the city to get to where you wanna go, then you can't even get games. You're standing on the court, shooting around, waiting for a game, waiting for a game. 58 minutes ago, 58 minutes without a game. My Xbox is literally about to shut off. I'm in the middle of streaming. It's been 58 minutes without a game. 12 game streak. We're on a 12 game streak. Took me two hours to get to 12 games. I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to hop off my own street to go hunt down matches. I've been waiting for a fucking hour. An hour. Like, there it goes. There it goes. An hour, an hour. That takes away from any possible enjoyment we would have had from the gameplay because we're still waiting to play the game. You paid for a brand new console. You got the next gen game. You're ready to rock and roll. Save file corrupt, save file corrupt, save file corrupt. Okay. Oh, you want to play over in East of the East? Oh, I'm from Knights. Now I have to skateboard all the way over there. Oh, and on top of it, I'm only going to get half of the rep. There's so many little quality of life mistakes 2K made with 2K21 next gen that hopefully we can see those corrections for 2K22. Pillar number three for me is the My Player Builder. Now for any park or pro-am game mode, the builder is the first block for having a successful game mode. We need to promote a builder that has balance, but also allows people to make unique builds that are still effective. 2K21 current gen, it was very play shot and paint bees dominated. Then we get next gen with this brand new My Player Builder, but it's completely broken and unbalanced, so 95% of players all make power forward builds. Despite the fact that there's, I forget what 2K listed it, but they said there's thousands or maybe even millions of potential builds you can make on this game, but 95% of people play on damn near the exact same build. Now, one of the main things with this, and it's the same thing with the gameplay, the people you bring in to test the game, you need to bring in separate people to test the builder. And it cannot just be regular video game testers. Those guys do not know the ins and outs of 2K. If you want to bring in people to test the dribbling, bring in a guy like Steezo that every year finds the most broken dribbling mechanics on the game. Bring that guy in to test the gameplay, to test the dribbling. Bring in 2K League players to test out Pro-Am and making sure the game mode is balanced. Now, when it comes to the builder, do the same thing. Bring in players that almost enjoy the builder more than they enjoy the game. For example, myself. I enjoy making unique builds. Obviously, if, you, if you're subscribed to the channel, you guys know a lot of my videos are build videos. Making a unique build, bringing it to the park, maxing it out, and then showing you what that build is capable of. Guys like myself, Dignified2K, Uncle Demi, and I'm sure there's many, many more that enjoy the builder almost as much as we enjoy the gameplay. We would love to come in before the game is launched to test the builder out. The problems with the 2K21 next gen builder with the power forwards being completely broken, I would have found that out within the first day of testing the builder out. If you brought me in and said, Joe, we're gonna give you 48 hours, play around with the builder as much as you want, 
find if there's anything completely broken about it. I would have found that out first thing. The first thing I would do is I'd make the same exact build at point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. The same height, same wingspan, put the attributes up and see. And I would have said, wow, the power forward gets 50 more badges than any other position. This is a major problem. Then they would have fixed it and it would have completely changed the 2K21 next gen builder. Bring in people that actually understand the build system and let them just play around with it for a couple days. It'll do wonders for how balanced the builder is once the game is actually launched. The fourth and final pillar I have is give players an incentive to play and grind the game. Now, when I talk about incentive to grind and play, I'm not talking about grinding badges or grinding my players overall. Sure, it might have been enjoyable in past 2Ks when it was first introduced, but it's to the point now that it feels like a chore. It feels like something that you're doing that you don't want to be doing on the game, but you have to do it. Give us something like new rep rewards. Some of the old rep rewards, like the Tigers from 2K16, they were so exciting to see the first time we saw them. It blew our minds. Give us something new like that. And I'm not just talking about the one reward for Legend. Leading up to Legend, there's no reason I should be getting electric arm sleeves. Like that is not a good enough rep reward that's gonna encourage players to keep playing. Give us new rep rewards. Give us a nice leaderboard system in ranked pro-am where people can play pro-am to grind leaderboards. They don't have to go sign up for an external league to try to play a little bit more competitively. Those external leagues are nice, but have something in the actual game that people can casually just get on and say, you know what? Let's try to grind all the way to division one on team pro-am. That sounds like fun. Or 3v3 pro-am or have leaderboards in the park for different types of things. I remember loading into 2K16 and seeing you know, the top five total points leaders and total rebounds leaders and assists and, and, and those types of things. It makes the game kind of fun. It gives you an incentive to say, you know, I, I want to get on that leaderboard. I want to show up on that, that billboard there. I want to have the community see my name on the screen. That gives players not only a reason to play, an incentive to play, but just another added bonus to playing the game a lot. I feel like in 2K21 Next Gen, a lot of that was missing. A lot of the rep rewards were very recycled or just not as exciting as they could be. And if 2K needs ideas for these types of rep rewards, what the community would want, there's tons and tons of people, content creators, players that have ideas and have put them out there for years. And 2K has never really taken that advice. Reach out to a couple people and see what they have. There's big YouTubers that do a great job of getting the pulse of the community and they would be more than willing to relay that information. Try to stay in touch with the community as much as possible so that they understand both the casual player and the competitive player and what they want. We'd be more than happy to give feedback to make the game as good as possible. Listen, at the end of the day, we love 2K and we want 2K to be the best game it possibly can. Now, as I said, I could probably list 100, 200, maybe even a thousand things that I feel like need to be fixed in NBA 2K21 next gen going into NBA 2K22 next gen. But I decided to pick the four that I feel would have the biggest overall impact on the quality of the game. Let's be honest, the first try at next gen did not meet our expectations. Let's just hope their second try is groundbreaking.